Hello friends, welcome to CEC Live Lectures. Dear friends, today in this session we are going to continue further with our series on disaster management. Today we are going to talk on emergency management, science and wise and role of youth. And for the discussion on the topic we have with us in our studios, Professor R.B. Singh. Professor R.B. Singh is a renowned professor of geography. He is from Delhi School of Economics, University of Delhi. Professor R.B. Singh's immense experience in the area of academics will help us out in understanding today's topic in detail. So let's welcome our guest Professor R.B. Singh once again. Hello sir, welcome to the lecture. Thank you Geetika ji. Welcome viewers. In this topic, very important topic of emergency management, I would like to divide this whole lecture into two parts. First I would like to explain the scientific advice. It is very important to have a scientific base on time of emergency. And then the second part I would like to highlight the role of young scientists and also the youth. Youth can play a very important role for emergency management and together with uh, recovery or relief operation. First I would like to say science advice on disaster emergency. and bring before you the conceptual dimension. It promotes scientific research on disaster risk pattern, causes and effects to the first responders. As you know first responders are the very important component of disaster management or emergency management because they have to deal different type of the uh, situation particularly the emergency situation in different part. Uh, and different places. Disseminate risk information with the best use of geospatial information technology. It can provide guidance on methodology and standards for risk assessment, disaster risk modeling and emergency response. It can promote and support the availability and application of science policy interface which are lacking uh, particularly in decision making capability in developing country and use post disaster quick rehabilitation through providing different type of livelihood options. This model I would like to explain about the framework of emergency management system. You know we have early warning system. Uh, first responders, tools and scientific materials are important, supply management is important, evacuation plan, institutional role is very important, communication capability is very important and when we talk about the recovery particularly I would like to highlight the recovery related to human health and also the livelihood on which the uh, people are very much dependent particularly in the underdeveloped region. Components of emergency management, these are the following, civil defense that is a very important uh, component. You are aware disaster management force already we have also in our country, uh, uh, six battalion uh, you know in particularly they are in the different part of the country, leadership and strategic governance. Sometime we forget about the animal and so that is why I would like to bring before you the animal emergency response, organizational and interpersonal communication, occupational safety in very very important in critical uh, sectors, public relations and social psychology, media particularly the social sites and finally law and ethics. These are the very very value system of society. These are also very very important. Scientific advice needed in emergency situation. First I would like to raise few questions. What to do during different type of disasters? Suppose if we are 
if occurs in indoors, if occur outdoors, if in a moving vehicle, if trapped under debris. How you can make a plan? Prepare a scientific kit. Plan what to do in case you are separated during an emergency. Plan what to do if you have to evacuate. So be informed. These are the an alertness. These are the very very important component of the science advice. And such science advice should be linked with the first responders and disaster management force. Types of scientific tool and equipment we need during the emergency. These are the following hand tools, fire fighting equipment, lighting and power equipment, our individual personal kit, miscellaneous utility equipment, personal protective gear, mountain rescue equipment, medical first response kit, equipment for ambulance, items for nuclear, biological and chemical emergency because we have to adopt a very special tools and technique when we are dealing with the nuclear, biological or chemical accidents or emergency. Then I would like to bring before you how effective response and communication needed during emergency. We have to estimate the expected downtime, interpret, uh, interruption cost and calculate community recovery cost or time. Estimate the number of people who are likely to seek shelter. Select low risk zone from which your response and recovery efforts can be staged by overlaying hazard and risk maps against estimate of your shelter seeking population. Collect, catalog and estimate disaster damage, losses and impacts. It is very important to improve our understanding about the communication uh, channels during the situation. Particularly I would like to mention about different type of channels like radio and television, community radio, telephone, uh, uh, particularly the SMS services, call broadcasting, internet email services, GIS, satellite based system and web related activity. You know every the channels what I men mentioned just now, they have advantages and they have also the disadvantages. So single you know mode of communication will not help. I think we have to adopt the some other you know uh, 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 different type of the means. SMM services is also very very important. Particularly, it is a very relatively low cost. It is one to one uh, you know, uh, communication and quick delivery can be done. You know, internet, email, first and interactive, multiple source can be checked for authenticity. Sometimes GIS system we need also to uh, know about the uh, number of people affected, number of villages affected total area, damages and these all can be done. Satellite based system are very very important particularly for integrating the different type of the uh, 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 data, uh, infrastructure related data, uh, uh, provide the broadband connectivity, rapid deployment and uh, several other. But you know we have also the disadvantages, mobile and television, you know, network takes time to get the warnings, limited use at night, you know, community radio 
in not very widespread so far. Uh, telephone also it is a only one to one. So, in this context the broadcasting or internet or uh, uh, call broadcasting may be the very very important. Need to share information among agency. Dealing with an emergency we need to pull together all available information about a specific issues such as responding to the different disasters and our response may be the different according to the type of disaster. Integrating information holdings, the need to inform policy development and foster effective policy outcomes by acquiring, integrating and analyzing available information holdings across different government agencies. Integrated service delivery in this context there is a need to provide services across agency for example using a street address to link various systems and disasters. And finally managing area of joint activity need to encourage sharing of information and investment within a, and across jurisdictions or with the private sector. Here you can see this diagram knowledge network for disaster you know this constitute governmental, non-governmental and the private agency. We have agency National Bureau of Soil Survey Land Use Planning, National Remote Sensing Agency, National NIC National Informatic Center for Climatic IMD, Water Reach Hydrological CWC Central Water Commission, Forest Survey of India, Botanical Survey of India, also the uh, uh, some uh, local institutions, NNRMS that is Department of Space, NRDMS or it is under the Department of Science and Technology because these all can be linked under the NSDI, a special infrastructure electronic clearing house. You know in this context also I would like to mention about the different government of India agency like uh, NDMA National Disaster Management Authority, uh, NIDM, NATMO, Geological Survey of India, Urban Bodies, then we have Department of Space related because we can get a lot of real time data, Census of India, uh, Central Groundwater Board, ISRO, CPCD and then various type of academic and research institutions, local level urban bodies and the NGOs. I would like to here put before you the map of the locating the disaster monitoring set center in India, one located in Patna, one in Guwahati, another in Kolkata. So three may be eastern side, then we have the uh, in Urisa, Mundali, then we have the Vijayawada, then in south we have in Tamil Nadu, uh, Arakonam, in central part we have the one in Nagpur, then western side we have Pune, Badodra, uh, then we have the also the greater Noida in Uttar Pradesh and the northwest side particularly in Bhatinda. These are the very very important institute you know where you know we have the location of BSF, uh, also the CRPF, CICSF, ITBP uh, you know battalion. Database for preparedness for emergency situation, what type of database we need? First, if we can get the real time data or near real time data. 
wave charts, archive data, forecasting extremes. Online inventory of emergency resources, it has been observed that a comprehensive database of disaster management related inventory and organized information dissemination system on availability of uh, specialized resources is very essential for mobilizing the specialized equipment and skilled human resources to respond immediately during the disaster. Now question arises, what type of the disaster databases we have? And particularly in this context, I would like to quote uh, here, disaster portal aims at providing valuable disaster loss information by facilitating centralized access to disaster loss databases, not only regionally but worldwide. The disaster portal built on this debt, which is the result of collaboration between Center for Research in Epidemiology of Disaster and the Global Risk Information Program with financial support from the United Nations Agency for International Development, very popularly known as USAID. Now you can see, here I am putting in India Disaster Resource Network that is www.idrn.gov.in. Here for emergency management they have given four important component like preparedness, response, recovery, mitigation. Then they are also trying to see you know that the how ministry of home affairs that is the main focal point and how IDRN works, you know, at uh, a macro level we have the NIC, NIDM, then you know central level, uh, middle level or the meso level I can say the state and then uh, we have the local level particularly when I talk local means the district level, you know. So we have a different layer district, states and then the national level and whether you know we can do the resource inventory, update data, uh, different type of the system uh, can be done you know uh, and various type of data already enter into this framework. I would like to bring before you another very important point here developing and providing topographic information used for emergency management. It is very, very important that uh, one is equal to, uh, if we can get the 50,000 scale, you know, topographical sheet, it is a very good to have the lot of information we can get like data for vulnerable topography, hazard map portal sites. Bhudwan can be the very good example, or urban area active fault maps you know can be uh, received, then digital elevation and topographic models and maps can be prepared. You know. Promoting the geospatial information library, here I would like to give you the one example of how the Japan is doing GSI. Geological, uh, 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 geological Survey of Jap uh, uh, you know, Japan, Survey Institute, it is uh, of Japan. You can see here they, use, they have the users and then we have the system. They have GIS maps, they have different type of materials like a metadata, public survey result. Then they have uh, information like uh, basic survey result, public survey result, preparation of different type of list particularly they can get from the metadata. This all can be you know included under the 
uh, as a clearing house and the, under the GIS maps, uh, then signs for browsing control point, service for browsing maps and aerial photographs, download fundamental geospatial data and map already prepared and users can directly access such type of the information. Uh, so, it is not only you know combination of maps, aerial photograph, but also the satellite imagery and various type of GIS maps can be used here. Now, I would like to take another very important UNISDR platform for promotion of early warning and they have categorized into the four category. First, risk knowledge where they are trying to analyze systematically collect data and undertake risk assessment. Then they can do monitoring and warning services. Here they can develop hazard monitoring and worldly warning services. Dissemination and communication, communicable risk information and early warnings. Then response capability particularly building the national and community response capability. So, these all can be combined together under this. I, I would like to give you the one example of you know hot spot identification will help how it can help in different type of efficient rescue program. I am taking you example of uh, Sundarban region. As you know the Sundarban region is very much uh, affected by the instability in the highland area and mountainous region and through the highland lowland interactive system this, this is a USGS map you know here you can see that how hot spots can be identified and if you have the such type of the inundated area such maps I think such maps can be used by the uh, community. Uh, it is very important this academic community should transfer such maps to decision makers that. I would like to take another example of surface deformation detected by interformatic SAR particularly from the INSAR combined with GNSS based control system. Here you can see the crustal movement from the 2014 Northern Nagano prefecture earthquake captured by interferometric SAR. SAR data can penetrate you know deeply not only for deep scaling it is very important but improving our understanding about the you know capability. Such data can be very much if you have in the database community and the uh, uh, operators can be used. Emergency aerial photograph. This is very very important particularly this emergency aerial photograph. Here you can see this the such maps already have been used uh, in the past. I am putting before you here the Chennai flood. Hope you will remember that the how this Chennai flood occur and then this the aerial photographs colored infrared aerial photographs very very important and we can provide for that you know we have we should have a very permanent setup even in each city or each locality. So, the district states and the uh, 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 nation should be linked. Now, you can see this the Kedarnath flood such type of the map if you can get particularly for relief operation and dealing with emergency it is a very very important and during the uh, 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 even for the preparedness this is a very very important. Nowadays I would like to also mention about the unmanned aircraft offer new tools for emergency response and particularly I can mention about the drones. Drone technology can efficiently provide aerial images of the selected area because according to our choice according to our need we can go and do the such type of the survey. It is not uh, uh, relatively less expensive also 
and our objective can be fulfilled. Unmanned aerial vehicles can be safely launched by qualified field personnel in a timely manner during all type of event and emergency accidents. Unmanned aircraft can be equipped to thermal imaging or infrared capability greatly improving chances of identifying hot spot. If we can have identified hot spots, fire fronts and other vital fire behavior information that can be transmitted to the public and policy makers. The aircraft can fly on automated flight patterns and transmit valuable real time data back to incident command and emergency operation. I would like to take this opportunity also to suggest that even our commercial vehicles can collect the lot of the climatic data and such climatic data can be used by us and particularly when we have the area inaccessible area like a Himalaya. There are not so many rain gauge or the uh, climatic station for that this we can use the commercial uh, 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 aircraft for this monitoring the uh, such information. Potential expansion may occur, public and property value risk and the data may also occur uh, in this contest. Here I can, I would like to mention about the early warning system particularly taking the cyclone, proper tracking the cyclone, weather prediction, cyclone tracking, measurement of rainfall, measurement of gauge level, tracking the storm waves, these are all scientific advice we need and so that is why the uh, first responders should get such information. Our disaster uh, in, uh, uh, ma management force should get such type of the knowledge and information. So, very scientific base needed Dispatch, dispatching, disseminating this information, uh, emergency alert. Now, I am putting before you the one here, the one model information and communication technology for emergency particularly leveraging ICT for a flood, flood warning system and disaster management. Here you can see this the forecast needed, risk knowledge needed, warning communication needed, warning response capability needed and then disaster response and coordination uh, uh, and we can reduce the damage and need assessment can be done. It may related to a GSM a smart mobile application and online geospatial database, whatever available, I think this is a very, very important. I would like to put before you this the one example of portable aerial photography and locator system, you know, developed uh, in foreign country and particularly this is a case of Jakarta. You can see this is a lot of flooding area, how the route of helicopters, position mention, the position of uh, photographed remarkable photo, these are the pulse developed by the PASCO is able to obtain information on the location of the subject while taking the photograph. So, such type of the information if Indonesia can develop, I think it is very important we can develop. I think we have Manu mapping the neighborhood in Uttarakhand that is a very, very important program of DST uh, government of India. I think that can get also we can get the information. Uh, then we have the uh, uh, different type of the uh, flooding events, the mobile apps and all can be uh, 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 very, very helpful linking with geospatial information system, dealing with emergency evacuation, effective mock drill training, uh, then also the uh, uh, you know uh, intensity and magnitude of the disaster evacuation system all are uh, very, very important. Finally, I can tell you that we need relevant ethical principle during emergency situation. Individual liberty, protection of the public uh, from harm, professionality, privacy, particularly a special need of women, duty to provide food and care, reciprocity, equity, trust, solidarity and stewardship. These are the very, very important. Thank you. With this note, thank you, sir. Thank you so very much for giving us uh, this session. Friends, we are back after a short break and we'll be discussing more. Till then, keep watching us. Thank you.
Hello friends, welcome back to the session. Friends, as you know that today we are talking on emergency management, science and advice and its uh, role in the youth, that is the role of the youth we are talking about. And for the discussion of the topic, we have with us in our studios, Professor R.B. Singh. Professor R.B. Singh is a professor of geography. So let's welcome our guest and let's try to understand the topic in detail. Hello sir, welcome to the lecture. Thank you, Gitka Ji. Welcome viewers. Uh, in this part of emergency management, we are going to discuss the role of youth scientist, young scientist, and particularly how youth can play a very important role in awareness building. First, first of all, I would like to bring before you the few lines from the Sendai framework of disaster risk reduction. I quote, policy and practices for disaster risk management should be based on an understanding of disaster risk in all its dimension of vulnerability, capacity, exposure of person and assets, hazard characteristics and the environment such as knowledge can be leveraged for the purpose of pre-disaster risk assessment. And here role of uh, young scientist is a very, very important. Particularly I would like to start Elements for effective risk exposure and assessment. What are the different elements? I think we have to identify the linkages between social, biophysical and built environment system that produce risk. Identify need of for improved understanding and local models for community resilience. Identify exposure databases and exposure models emphasizing issues of a scale, data access, types of data and integrated analysis approaches. We have to incorporate geospatial information technology for updating and disseminating location sensitive vulnerability and exposure information to decision makers, general public and community at risk. Here through this diagram I am putting before you different type of databases we can use. First I would like to divide into the two type of database. A special database where we can take the data for like a uh, district, a state, nation. Then we have the non-special databases where we can take different type of the uh, working activity, building material different type of a structure, population demographic characteristics. We can have raster or vector data model. We have, we can store in a form of point, line or polygon or if we, you, we are dealing with the non-spatial information or database, we can store in hierarchical data structure, network data structure and relational data structure. I would like to bring before you a very important concept, data participatory approach. How community can collect the data? I think if our nation or any country can involve the community in collecting the data, I think that will be the very, very important, you know, like a Manu experience, mapping neighborhood, participatory approach for data collection and used by community can fill gaps in scientific data in assessing vulnerability and therefore risk. Sometimes we forget exposure. I think we have to emphasize not only the vulnerability, risk, but together with exposure also. Community based crowdsourcing, bottom up versus a statistically based top down approaches, very, very important hazard specific versus hazard independent, vulnerability and resilience, community engagement and ownership, mapping of vulnerable groups, these are will be the very, very approach. Now you can see the one here, how under the multi-criteria analysis, we can use this overlay system, different type of GIS spatial analysis taking into consideration of the soil data, different type of soil structure, 
soil units, rainfall, agroecological region, block boundary, land unit, district boundaries, so on. Risk and resource mapping. The impacts of disaster depend strongly on the level of exposure and special aspects of risk in affected area. Both risk, exposure and vulnerability are dynamic, vary across temporal and spatial areas and depend on economic, social, geographic, demographic, governance and resource and environmental factors. Measuring risk and exposure requires an integrated understanding of the different components and how these factors combine to contribute to the statistical data generated from satellite, published record, aerial photographs and approaches which involve local knowledge which can be integrated into the risk mapping. Vulnerability and risk research through integrated and comprehensive, sometimes it is known as multi-hazard mapping. Indices within dim dimension of social, physical, economic and environmental vulnerability developed by scientists from natural, environmental and social sciences should be integrated in all hazard risk assessment and post-disaster assessment to provide more comprehensive and an integrated assessment. Risk assessment and integration of resource data. In this context, particularly I, I can uh, uh, use the appropriateness of methods used for these assessment dip, depending on the purpose of analysis, time, geographic spell, scale involved, the resources available, number of type of stakeholders, actors and economic and the governance factors can play also the very important role. How different type of exposure information, vulnerable data, how we can use to develop the risk indicators. Because in earlier model you have seen risk indicators are very, very important. First, vulnerability and exposure information are often used as indicator of relative risk. Collection and analysis of vulnerability and exposure information in order to inform risk indicators and to process monitoring a, a space in time uh, and a space. Several indicators require a statistically robust information regarding nature and built environment. In this context, I would like to give you example of building a stock, lifelines, different type of critical facility, particularly the critical facility located in the like a flood prone area, disaster prone area will be automatically at risk. The development of advanced model and so that is why this the mapping neighborhood culture will be very, very important. Our school, colleges and university should inculcate culture of uh, you know preparing such type of risk vulnerable and exposure maps from our surrounding region. Development of advanced model to predict the geographical distribution, susceptibility to damage and loss and value to the element exposure to hazards. Now I would like to put before you, this is the area Ram Ganga Basin. Ram Ganga Basin, you know, it is also quite agricultural developed region and here you can see this the remote sensing data has been used. Fault zoning helps in efficient management of recurring flood disasters. Uh, by overlaying the census data, we are able to know the area affected by flood. We also overlaid the villages and so we will be able to know the number of villages affected by flood. And if we know the number of villages and number of area, it is very easy to calculate the uh, even the uh, number of people affected by the any type of the disaster like a flood in this case. I would like to pre uh, uh, bring before you the one case study here and I would like to mention Palin you know this is a very very important of a how the prompt action taken by the uh, decision makers 
and through effective governance. You know, 87, uh, 1877 to 2012, more than 300 psych loan and particularly 110 were severe in 50 kilometer wide strip in east coast. Less severe cyclone activity in the west coast, particularly only the 36 cyclone. In 19 severe cyclone storms date more than 10,000 in each event. In 21 cyclone in Bay of Bengal, 1.25 million lives, uh, lives have been lost. Recent cyclone of Palin, Odisha government issues high alert in 14 district, limiting casualty to 44 people and property loss reduced to 700 million US dollar. Now you can understand from your own perception how due to the prompt action, acceptability of the people by the warning, I think, and uh, rescue and uh, uh, you know evacuation, I think we will be able to reduce the heavy loss of life. It is a typical human geoscience disaster prevention model with effective governance and utilizing science policy interface. Here you can see the map I am putting before you composite of precipitation anomaly during the falling and how this you can see this the contour show intensity of high rainfall. Where we had the center, where we have the more high intensity rainfall and how the rainfall impact of the rainfall reduce when you go far from the core area, far from the uh, 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 that you know uh, central point. Such type of the maps are very very important, very very valuable particularly for planners and decision makers and even community at large. Here you can see almost a lot of you know 100,000 people you know were persuaded to move at safe shelter and mass evacuation reduced the casualty in this. Quick rehabilitation through diversified livelihood option is very very should be linked with the uh, you know emergency situation because development of community based early warning system like a globe indication system globe glacier lake outburst flood promoting self-sufficient livelihoods very very important, low investment, high return livestock like great uh, uh, goat rather than buffalo, reappraisal of industrial infrastructure adapted to disaster, adaptation of disaster resistance crops like deep root crop flood flood affected area can be very very uh, useful. I would like to give you example of a sati. This the 60 days crop earlier used to be in Bihar and eastern Uttar Pradesh area and before flooding come you know uh, in August end of August people used to harvest and now they have the something to eat. I think the such type of variety should be also promoted. Focusing on rehabilitation improvement in the situation of refugee uh, trying to find better life adoptive, transformative, localized and longer term support, unconditional cash transfer to vulnerable groups, forward backward, uh, backward linkages with the markets, these are the some of the important possibility. How this can be achieved? This can be achieved through the role of the young scientists involving through the science advice and then also through awareness building. How we can create the awareness? Awareness can bring, aware, uh, uh, education can bring awareness and awareness can create action and action will bring participation of the people. Young scientists from various disciplines, cross cutting field of like this case landslides have the potential to enable an effective sustainable and evidence implementation and monitoring of the Sendai framework. Young scientists are pushing the boundary of research and its context a specific application for improving decision making process. To take into consideration of a spatial and temporal scale, the innovative and creative capacity of younger generation should be utilized to ensure that good practices 
and scientific evidence are used to support decision maker now and for the future. The potential contribution of young scientists in tailoring the decision making to ensure re resilient society. Now here I would like to mention India's youth demographic burden or dividend. With 356 million people between age group of 10 to 24 years, India has world's largest young population despite having a smaller population uh, uh, having a smaller population than China. With 269 million young people, China has second largest young population. So even total population we are less than China, but our young population is more than China. Indonesia 66 million only, US 65 million uh, youth, Pakistan 59, Nigeria 57, Brazil 51, Bangladesh 48 million according to United Nations Population Fund, but India has 356 million. I think time has come to utilize these resources, particularly for educating the people, creating the awareness about the different type of program. Quality of youth, treasure of the nation towards awareness building. Indian youth can teach their community how to reduce the risk and impact of disaster. Indian youth are able to bring about meaningful change in social behavior and attitude of the people they can make a real difference in the time of disaster. The value of showcasing knowledge on group practices can be also promoted by the young people. Identify various ways in which youth can contribute more effectively to the science and technology, open sets data collection, young scientists respective research and dissemination forum or publication. Challenges and possible solution. Review existing mechanism opportunity for young scientists to engage in the application of science for DRR and IGU, International Geographical Union, you know, as a presently as a vice president, but in August I am taking over as a secretary general. I am inviting the youth to, you know, to, to suggest different type of strategy, how we can mobilize the community or the local level you know institution uh, particularly uh, not only this the UN to ICSU to university to research institute to professional and learned society, civil society, youth and community led organization towards DRR disaster risk correction. Promoting the collection and collection of existing knowledge from young scientists, research thesis and publication, databases that can be used to build further scientific knowledge. Most of our researches are, I think, the applied researches. People are working on flooding, drought related, earthquake related, cyclone related, livelihood related, option related. I think it time has come that decision makers on agency like uh, AICT or UGC or CSIR collect policy briefing documents from these you know, researchers. We have more than 69 researchers all over the thousand uh, researchers all over the country. They are getting more than 15 lakh rup uh, uh, rupees, you know, uh, 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 and uh, we are not able to get a, a small policy briefing document. Awareness, I uh, three priority areas I would like to mention. First, enable or strong youth involvement in the interstate governmental processes on indicators, monitoring and review. Priority 2, outreach activity at all levels to mobilize youth and university in science and policy, data debates, Twitter charts, web, webinars and competition. Priority 3, develop regional team of young scientists from varied discipline to share knowledge through joint publication and promote DRR at regional and national level. Community based disaster management. These young uh, scientists and young uh, people
can also contribute towards the community preparing the community based disaster management, particularly putting local community at center of disaster management, because these people are well informed. Subsidiarity, economies of a scale, equity, heterogeneity and public accountability, these all processes, these can be the very guided principle for engaging with in the disaster management. Its different stages include disaster vulnerability assess assessment, risk reduction planning, early warning system, post disaster relief and participatory monitoring and evaluation. Indian efforts, high power committee of disaster management on working group on the national committee on disaster management had emphasized the need to include the youth volunteer organization like Nehru Jua Kendra, uh, at, at, at the national NSS, NCC, I think we can involve the NCC in overall human resource development plan and capacity building of the community to initiate mitigation and preparedness activity to minimize the impact of disasters. How we can bring the changing, uh, uh, we can change the perception among the youth towards DLR. First, can be a very good example mapping neighborhood culture, inculcating mapping neighborhood you know, culture in, uh, from, uh, from schools, colleges and university. I think the teachers can play very important. University or the college administrators, school administrators can play in this contest. Establishing and training youth brigades for bringing innovative creativity in different type of disaster, landslides or flooding or any at different levels. Promoting culture of self-assessment for preparedness and awareness generation to individual, community and regional levels. Promoting evidence-based low-cost skill practices among youth, scientists for DRR and improving youth networking platform for DRR, national, regional and local level. I think if every school we have the uh, uh, and college and university can form the youth brigade particularly for DRR, I think we can minimize the uh, loss of human life during the uh, emergency. Now here I am giving you the model given by the World Bank development report, here you can see how this three lens approach towards youth and development. Focus on working with and for youth towards effective development. Working with, with he and for youth, then we can you know motivate, target groups should be clear, collaboration could be clear, youth initiators should be clear. Work, working with youth as a beneficiary, engaging with youth as a partners and supporting youth as a leaders. Then we can have the youth initiators, you know. So participatory practices, you know, this youth engagement like a participatory. Here you can see youth of Himalayan region as most productive asset for risk reduction. And in mapping neighborhood, we have got a very lot of success. Youth can build resilience among the local community by paying the, paying the active role of social workers. Action by youth for safer school in rural area of Himalayan districts. Encouragement should be given to mock drills in schools and colleges in all districts which are most susceptible to landslides, earthquake or flooding. Active work should be done at grassroots level by creating awareness among local community in this landslide region and promoting the R&D in the field of disaster reduction. Initiation should be done of project preparation activity for identification of, uh, for identification of landslide risk mitigation investment under national landslide risk mitigation project. 
in Himalayan area landslides are very very important chronic problem you know here you can see youth playing active role as a social workers I am taking this a few photographs from the area a scope of social work is very wide youth can provide their services socially useful productive work affected and prone area of landslide. Here you can see drive for safer school in a rural area the Himalayan district. Interaction of active teachers, aware parents, enthusiastic children and fascinate uh, 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 youth in school and co uh, colleges will ultimately lead to uh, reduction of the risk. Here you can see how they are active. Mock drills should be conducted and recognized as a sincere efforts for landslides or the flooding related problem or even the flash flood issue, cloud burst issue that is a very becoming a very very important. Here you can see that awareness about the human induced and natural factor responsible for landslides proved to be significant how these women are involved. Particularly I would like to mention Himachal Pradesh and on the basis of my research experience I can tell uh, Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand, we have a lot of Mahila Mandals are very, very active. It is very important that we should involve the Mahila Mandal in this whole process. Awareness regarding remedial measures for landslide risk reduction, proper utilization of land, control of overgrazing, plantation of tree, const construction of tow wall. So, these are the very important things that a youth can take up and they can educate control on construction of houses in vulnerable area, better drainage techniques on the slopes, agroforestry, posting sign boards for people and tourist awareness. Recently I visited also the uh, East Japan tsunami affected area and found lot of sign boards you know were there uh, uh, you know about warning the people about the dangers uh, that the how if you will go so many uh, meter I think the danger is there. So, in this type of the sign board are also very, very important, campaigning through NSS and NCC, mapping uh, 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 vulnerable area, creating awareness poster and folders including association safety rules, behavior recommendation, booklet detailing, disaster preparation manuals and handbooks, fully documented information, audio visual material, these are also very, very important audio visual games for attracting attention of particularly the kids, these are the very, very important. And we have several agency, flood ministry of water resources, cyclone, Indian meteorological department, earthquake, India meteorological department, EP epidemics, ministry of health, chemical disaster, ministry of environment and forest, rail accident, ministry of railway, why not these department are taking up the separate, you know, uh, awareness building exercise particularly for educating the people for mine disaster department of mines. Finally, I would like to conclude that awareness is a key to reduce the di disaster. Public awareness and community participation in disaster mitigation is prime importance and uh, preparedness, education and training playing a very important role. The most important resources which landslide risk reduction requires is the active involvement of academic and decision making community. The vibrant youth of India can play multiple significant roles in integrating the societal stakeholders like a community, academic community and the uh, policy makers and which will ultimately lead to disaster management and better emergency management. Thank you. Ben. Well, this note, thank you, sir. Thank you so very much for giving us this session. Friends, uh, we will be back soon and uh, would be discussing more in our next uh, session. So, keep watching us, keep writing us at info.cc at nic.in. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much.